crud. Create, read, update, delete. It needs to burn in a tire fire. While it sounds simple and it's easy to implement, over time in a large system, it leads to a lot of spaghetti code and a lot of complexity. I'm Derek Comartin from CodeOpinion.com, and to combat that, one way is to be thinking about intent and capturing that explicitly. Once you do this, you'll realize that the floodgates open with possibilities. I'm gonna illustrate and explain the common path a lot of developers take once they realize this. I wanna thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. So to illustrate this, I'm running this warehouse sample application that I found on GitHub, and it's kind of the epitome of CRUD, at least related to products, is that we see we have a product, a listing of them, we can add a new product, we can update, edit the product, we can change the name, the description, et cetera. But the key thing I wanna focus here on is the price. We can change the price. So right now it's $30.99. What happens if I were to change this to $10? Okay, we just update and change it to $10 and we can start selling that product at $10. But what were we really doing there? We have no idea. We have no clue what they're actually trying to do. Sure, they're updating the price, but there's something behind that. There's a little bit more than just updating the price. But because we're building with a CRUD system here, create, read, update, delete, we're just providing the user an ability to update the product. But we have no idea what their actual intent is. That means that we want the users, our end users, to start being explicit. We want them to tell us what exactly they're doing. They're not just updating a product with that price, they were doing something specific. For example, maybe they were having a flash sale. That's why they were reducing the price that much. There's some business intent behind this. They're not just changing the price. They were doing something very explicit. So if we're looking at this CRUD UI and I'm changing the price to $10.99, we can try to infer things. We can infer that, okay, well, the existing price, now you're changing it to something lower, so the price is being reduced. But that's not really exactly the same thing as saying having a flash sale that we're gonna be reducing the price by this much for this period of time, for some duration. That's very different than trying to infer that, okay, I'm using this CRUD, but I just, I lowered the price. It's not really the same thing. What we need to do is drive the user. That means the kind of the first step in this and capturing intent and being explicit is moving to a task-based UI. Being task-driven is really thinking about the intent, the commands, the operations, the behaviors, kind of those business concepts that your end users are performing. If they're using kind of a CRUD-based UI, those things still exist, they just exist within your end user's head, not in your system. So to capture those in your system, you need to start with a task-based UI and thinking about those commands. So when I was changing the price, what I was really doing is creating a flash sale is what I wanted to do. So that means reducing the price significantly for a duration. So instead of just having an edit, now in the UI, we're specifically providing an action so the end user can do that. They can specify what the price is. I could say we're doing $20.99 and we're doing it for a day. That's how long the sale is um, available for. And we can start that flash sale. Now the thing is, is once you start capturing this, you can start realizing, okay, well now it's not just about static data or data as it is right now. We might now start recording on our backend in our database historically what the price was at any given time or potentially what we wanna schedule something in the future. I mentioned at the very beginning, this opens the floodgates of possibility once you start capturing intent. Now we can see historically what the price have been. We can schedule what the price change is gonna be effective on a certain date. But when you're working in a large system, oftentimes you wanna be reactionary. When something occurs, you wanna do something else. You no longer need to infer that, you know explicitly, explicitly what the user was trying to do. As an example, the possibilities open up. If we have something like a flash sale that's very specific and we know a product's going on sale, maybe we want to email all the users or our customers that have that product in their wish list. So we could say, hey, that product that you were looking at or that you've been saving up for that you really want to get, it's in your wish list. Guess what? It's effectively on sale for this price for one day or when the sale ends. How would you do that otherwise if you didn't know you were having that sale? You want to be capturing intent. So the next step on the path, once you start capturing intent, you have a task-driven UI, the next place people go, after you've performed a command, that specific task, you become event-driven. You know something's happened and you can publish that something's happened to other consumers using the publish subscribe pattern. So once you start becoming event-driven, you realize, okay, we have this command, it performs some type of action, maybe there's some type of state change, some type of side effect, 
then we can say, okay, we have these consumers. Maybe there's one, maybe there's none, maybe there's hundreds. We could say, hey, a flash sale was started and we could have a consumer that is uh, responding to that, reacting to that. Maybe one is specifically gonna be sending out those emails. Maybe one sends out text messages. I have no idea, push notifications to your mobile app. But all these are independent and you could just extend functionality within your system being reactionary when you know these specific events have occurred. So what I've done in the sample application, I've kind of followed its structure of what it was doing. I added a new flash sale command and I've added the same thing. It's pulling out the product. I've added a flash sale method in here. It's really not doing all that much, but it is creating a new flash sale started event. From there, what we are doing is that after we save, and I have videos separately about this, about Outbox pattern and reliable messaging. That's not the point of this. I'll have videos, uh, links at the very end of this video for this, but I'm generating that event once we've actually created that flash sale and I can publish those out. Then I can just create consumers. I can consume this particular flash sale started event. And from there we could do whatever we need to get out the listeners, uh, list of customers that have that in their wish list, email them out. Like I said, just create different consumers. You can create as many consumers as you want because these are operating independently. You're extending functionality without changing any of the existing functionality. And that's a very important concept is that you can extend your system without having to change it. I mentioned at the very beginning that spaghetti code complexity mess that happens in a large system over time is because we don't have that option. Oftentimes we're start out as crud, but then we have various inferred logic saying, okay, if this happens then we need to do this. And then the next thing you know, you end up with some file that is doing many, many different things. It's hard to change and it becomes kind of a turd pile. It's really hard to change, hard to manage, easy to introduce bugs because it's not extendable. You want to be extending, not modifying. Now, the last step of this journey is thinking about events as a way to record state. So you're thinking about event sourcing. So you're using these events, you've been capturing intent, you know what's happening in your system, but rather than recording current state, you just record all the state transitions, all the business concepts that got you where you are now. So that means that instead we're thinking about, well, what's the first thing that happened? Well, we added a product to our catalog, so the product was for sale. We record the name, the price, the description, etc. Then we did a flash sale. We said, okay, this flash sale started on uh, this particular date. This is the new price and its duration for a day. Then the next day that flash sale ended and the price went back to $24.99 as an example. And then maybe later on further in the future, that product was discontinued. But we are now recording all these events as state, as a way to record state rather than current state. I'll have a link at the very end of this video to a video about event sourcing that goes into a little bit more details about what it is if you're unfamiliar. It all starts by being explicit and capturing intent. Once you do that by providing the users with a task-driven UI so they can be explicit about the business functions that they're performing. Once you know what they've done, then you can be publishing events about what's happened. You can be doing that to be reactionary, to have consumers that are decoupled, that can extend your system by performing other type of actions when something has occurred. As well as you can be thinking of events as a way to record states so you understand the history of what's changed in your system. It all just starts with capturing intent. Let's think less about CRUD, less about entities, and more about actions. Does CRUD have its place? Absolutely yes. Does a task-driven UI need to be used everywhere? No. You want to be selective about where you're using it. Typically, CRUD makes a lot of sense, kind of more in the, the sides of your application, kind of those external boundaries that really don't have a lot of value. That makes sense that they're CRUD. They're simple to create. You don't really need to care too much about what the user's trying to do. They're just updating, creating data, that's it. But in the core of what you're building, oftentimes you really do want to be knowing what your user's trying to do. If you enjoy topics like this around software architecture and design, and you have questions, comments, or your own thoughts, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server where you can chat with other software developers. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment, and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.